Having the basics down in music theory is an incredibly powerful tool. If you're playing jazz, then interpreting chord symbols can be very difficult. And if you have a solid basic overview of what notes are in there, then you can find other ways to play the chord and you can start adding notes and fills to it. The things that make it a lot more fun to play jazz. That is what I want to show you in this video, because an overview like that is what is going to stop you from sounding like a Pat Metheny clone. And instead of just learning a single jazz lick, then you're actually learning a recipe that you can turn into thousands of jazz licks. Now I know that there's a lot of stuff in here that you might already know, but then you can use this video as a sort of checklist to check if you have it all under control. The place to start is of course the scale that you need the most, the major scale. I assume that you're already somewhat familiar with that, but to keep it simple, let's just use C major. The important thing to remember is that a major scale is constructed by a series of whole and half steps. And that recipe that you do wanna know would be whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. On guitar, you have a short chord, which is sort of a physical solution where you're just moving a shape around. That means that if you play a C major scale like this, then you can turn that into a D major scale by just playing the same shape, but moving it a few frets. But that also means that you don't really know what notes are in there anymore. And when you play songs, then it's actually very practical to know that the next chord is the four chord in the key, and that is this note in the scale. So here's how you can start figuring that out. I'm gonna show you this using D major as an example, but it works for any note that you can think of. It's really just about using sharps and flats to get the intervals right. You need to remember or write down that row of intervals that make up the major scale. So whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. For D major, you can write out the notes from D to D. D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D. And now you just need to go through that and make sure that the intervals fit with the order that I just said. And that means that from D to E, that's a whole step, it's fine. E to F, that should be a whole step, but now it's half. So I'm gonna change F into an F sharp. And actually that also means that from F sharp to G, now I have a half step. So G to A, that's a whole step. A to B is a whole step. B to C is a half step, but it should be a whole step. So I'm gonna change C to C sharp. And then we're back on D. The next thing you can do is that now that you know what notes are in the scale, you can map this onto your scale positions. So if you take a scale position that you already know, and let's just assume that you also know where the root is, then you can just play that and start on the root, and then you know what notes are in there. So you can say that while you're playing along. So D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C sharp, D. This is the basic construction of a major scale, which is of course important, but what is really useful is to start linking this to some chords, because when you're playing a song, then it looks like this. The strongest chord that we have isn't really a jazz chord, which would be a chord with at least a seventh. And that's because the strongest chord only has three notes. It is of course the triad. You construct triads by stacking thirds. So for C, if you were to write it out as a sort of a formula, then that would be one, three, five. And here, of course, one, three, and five are just the notes out of the major scale. So C major would be C, E, and G. C minor would then be one, flat, three, and five, and that would be C, E flat, and G. And of course, the difference between those two is really just the distance between the two notes, the first two notes. So C to E is a major third, and C to E flat is a minor third. Like this, you can also construct a diminished triad, which is one, flat three, flat five, so C, E flat, G flat, and of course also an augmented triad, which is a major triad with an augmented fifth, so one, three, sharp five, C, E, G sharp. Now you have the four basic triads, but there are actually three more that I think you wanna know. Sus four, where the third is replaced with the fourth, in C that would be C, F, G, and Sus two, where now the third is replaced with the second, so in C that would be C, D, and G. And actually if you check, then SOS2 and SOS4 are really just inversions of each other, so in a way they're kind of the same. Another triad that you probably don't see a lot in songs, but that you definitely want to know because it's used a lot when you're playing chords, is the major flat five triad. So for C that would be of course one, three, flat five, so C, E, 
G flat. And I'm mentioning this one because it is incredibly useful for playing rootless minor six or dominance or minor seven flat five chords. But right now, these are just structures without any context. And you really wanna put them in a context so that you see the bigger picture. And that context would probably be a scale. As I mentioned, then chords are created by stacking thirds. And actually that is really easy to do in a scale. So constructing the diatonic harmony and placing the triads in a context could be something like this. Start with the C major scale. And we can put thirds on top using the notes in the scale to get first a row of diatonic thirds. And then, of course, add another third to get triads, which is a really useful row, of course, to remember as well. So for C major, we now have C major, D minor, E minor, F major, G major, A minor, and B diminished. It is incredibly useful to know what triads go together. And as you'll see later, it's also a huge help in finding more arpeggios that you can use when you're improvising over a chord, which at that point actually just means more melodies that you have available in your solos. You can do this with any scale and you should certainly know the triads of the major scale by heart. So that would be this order, major, minor, minor, major, major, minor, diminished. It's really important to figure this out for harmonic and melodic minor as well. And that will give you examples of the other triads, but we'll get to that later. Enough with the triads, let's get to some real jazz chords. Jazz, you don't have triads as sort of the basic chord in the songs very often, but we do still play triads in solos all the time. The basic chord type is the seventh chord, but constructing the seventh chord is now super easy, barely an inconvenience. You just add another diatonic third to the triads. So for our triads, C, D minor, E minor, F, G, A minor, and B diminished, we now get C major seven, D minor seven, E minor seven, F major seven, G seven, A minor seven, and B half diminished. Again, the order of chord types is really useful to know. So for a major scale, that is major seven, minor seven, minor seven, major seven, dominant seventh, minor seven, and half diminished. And as you can see, there are four chord types in the scale. Major seven, so one, three, five, seven, that is C, E, G, and B. We have a dominant seven, that's on the fifth degree, so we're on G. And here you have one, three, five, flat seven, so G, B, D, F. There's also a minor seven chord on D minor, for instance. So that's one, flat three, five, flat seven, D, F, A, C, and a minor seven, flat five, that's on the seventh degree, B, and here you have one, flat three, flat five, flat seven, so B, D, F, and A. The reason that I construct chords in scales is because that added context really tells you a lot about what is going on in the music. If you take this lick, as you can see, then over the G7, I'm using a B half diminished arpeggio which is of course the diatonic arpeggio from the third of G7. So we're combining the knowledge of the chord with the diatonic harmony. You can also see that the E minor triad sounds really great on a C major seven, but that's just because an E minor triad, so E, G, and B, is really just a C major seven, C, E, G, B, without the C. And the same thing applies to chords. Check out this two, five, one in C. On the D minor seven, I'm using an F major seven voicing, which is giving me a D minor nine sound, simply because over that D bass note, then we just have really the rest of the chord, so F, A, C, and then also the seventh of the F major seven, which is an E, and that's of course the nine of a D minor seven. And the same thing works for the G seven. Here I'm using a B half diminished chord, and that's giving me that added A, which is the ninth of G seven. So the diatonic chords become a part of how you learn things and how you can use the same grips, the same material for a lot of different things. So it's very efficient. In the beginning, you of course have to think about this and figure out what notes are in D minor seven and what is the diatonic arpeggio from the third. But the more you do this, the more you will get used to using these. And at some point you will just know it. You don't have to think about it at all. And that is very efficient. It's definitely worth the trouble. And it's a lot better and a lot more flexible than just having some diagrams or shapes that you're moving around on the neck, but for the rest, you can't really do anything with them. As I said, there are more chord types than just the four that I already covered. And to find some of those, let's try to build the chords in harmonic minor, because that's gonna give us some more stuff to work with. To keep it easy, let's just start with A harmonic minor. 
get you more comfortable with this process, then they should start with the triads. So for the notes, we have A, B, C, D, E, F, G sharp, and A. And for the first note, A, we have an A minor triad. Then we have on B, that's a B diminished. And then on C, here we have one of the new triads. We have an augmented triad, then D minor, E major, and F major and then G sharp diminished. And then we can of course extend these into seventh chords just by adding another note in there. And then you have A minor major, B half diminished, C major seven sharp five, D minor seven, E seven, F major seven, and G sharp diminished. And notice that G sharp diminished has a diminished seventh, so from G sharp to F, and that's sometimes a little bit confusing because, of course, that's the same as a six interval. And to immediately show you how useful this is, remember that on the two five one lick in C, then I used the arpeggio from the third of the G seven, and you can do the same here. So if I'm improvising over an E seven, then if we look at the third of that chord, that's a G sharp. I can use that diatonic arpeggio. That's a G sharp diminished. And this works, of course, because we have E7, that's E, G sharp, B, and D. And then combining that with G sharp diminished, G sharp, B, D, and F. Essentially, they're the same, except for that last note, which is adding a flat nine to the sound, which is a really great sound for a dominant that resolves to a minor chord. And we can put that to use in a minor two, five, one lick like this one. Working on this and getting these connections into your system is something that can really speed up your learning process. Because if you start to practice diatonic triads and arpeggios while also being aware of what triad or arpeggio you're playing, then you have a better overview of the harmony and the scale. You start to see the shapes that you need for soloing on the fretboard, and you're able to figure out what is being played in jazz solos so that you can get that into your own playing. All stuff that makes it easier to learn and play jazz, but it probably isn't going to be useful if you don't learn any songs that you can use it on. Learning songs becomes a lot easier if you understand the harmony. And I talk about that in this video covering how I'm using functional harmony, but also how Barry Harris and Pat Martino have shortcuts that are actually the opposite of each other, but it will all help you learn and remember songs. It doesn't have to be difficult to learn songs. Check that out.